Maximo, are you uh, able to hear us and communicate well at this point? Yes, perfect. Excellent. Okay. Um, welcome, Maximo. Um, so, Maximo, I would just like to start with a, a basic question before we dive into um, everything about the Andes. And, um, you know, though the Andean Initiative works on a large variety of Andean crops, SIP is, of course, known for potatoes. Um, currently, there's a lot of misinformation out in the world about the nutrition provided by this staple crop and its environmental impact. Can you enlighten us? Uh, no, thank you very much for, for the question. And as all of you know, because of, of the work you do every day, uh, the potato is the most is of the, one of the world's most important root and tuber crops worldwide. It is recognized uh, as the having the biggest role in non-cereal food in the world, and its contribution to food security and poverty eradication is extremely important. It is grown in more than 125 countries in the world, uh, and it, it is basically the major food of several billions of people. Now, potatoes are energy dense uh, and often uh, from the bulk of the diet in providing the calories. And in a typical the typical diet of carbohydrates will contribute to about 50% of the total energy. So on the energy-based diets, potatoes play a, a crucial role. Uh, so they can clearly contribute into this, especially in the days that we are facing significant levels of undernourishment in the world. But in addition, potatoes have no fat and are low in sodium. Uh, potatoes are rich in vitamin C and vitamin B6. So depending on the, on the form of preparation, they can also supply good amounts of, of thiamine, niacin, folate, and magnesium. And some potato preparations can be considered high in a di dietary fever. Uh, but as you know, uh, there are also other problems or, or situations which we need to, to be aware. Potatoes cannot be classified as vegetables because of the high starch content and therefore high caloric content. So potatoes products like French fries uh, and potato chips can be characterized by high levels of acrylamide, acrylamide which can be uh, car carcinogenic. So the important thing where we need to, to understand is that uh, potatoes can bring significant benefits to our population. But of course, there is a variance of potatoes and that's the beauty of the potato. You have 3,700 varieties of potatoes in the Andes and each of them has a different attribute and each of them has a different nutrition content. Uh, and that's where we need to look at the variance. Uh, the, 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 the important topic in, in, in what is nutrition is diversity of diets and diversity of, of micronutrients. And the variety, the biodiversity that we have with potatoes uh, is something extremely important. And it's something that gives us uh, huge opportunities to be able to, to get the benefits we need. But there are, there are potatoes that could not necessarily comply with all what we need, but others that they do. And that's the combination that we need to, to bring together to, to make it uh, this optimal. But the important thing is the amount of varieties. I say 3,700, others says 5,000 varieties. I remember I was in the World Potato Congress and there was a whole discussion about the number. Uh, but but this, this diversity, uh, I think, is central, and the role that seed plays in this is important. That's why this initiative is important. In terms of the environment, uh, uh, potatoes could have some potential problems of environment, as many other commodities. But again, what, what, what we have to learn from, from the world of potatoes, I think, is, is what our prehistoric Incas did, is how we can use them in different microclimates and how we can obtain and maximize the benefits from the different microclimates and the different soils that we have across the Andes, which is a huge advantage and which also helps to bring a significant resilience uh, to producers. So that's, I think, is something to learn. And I know SIP is doing a series of projects on this. Uh, and it's one of the things that we need to today uh, to be able to, uh, to benefit from, from this great product. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maximo. As a matter of fact, SIP um, has had a, a breakthrough recently on um, biofortified potatoes with zinc and iron as well. You have the grand um, privilege of being able to look at this globally from where you sit at FAO, but you are Peruvian and you come from this region. And is there, you know, one or two things that if you could just impact those one or two things, you would see a transformation in how the Andes thrives, how the, you know, the agrobiodiversity, the smallholders, um, the planetary health, like what, what is it that you see from where you sit that you would just, you know, if you had a crystal ball and you could change that one or two things, what would it be? Okay, let, let, me, let me first start with some comments. Uh, 
based on what I have heard before. So, so one thing that we need to be careful is that COVID-19 is a shock, it's an exogenous shock. And what we are observing in Peru of return migration, we're observing across the world. It's not just a Peru thing. Uh, and this is season, this is temporal migration. People are moving out of the cities because they think they will have better conditions during the crisis because of the physical distance and so on. And clearly, right now, in the conditions we are, uh, the Andes are not going to give them the income and the, and the wages they need to be able to subsist. And why I'm saying that? Because despite all the wonders we have been talking about uh, the Andes and, and the biodiversity and the potatoes, those are the regions that have the highest levels of poverty and extreme poverty still in Peru and in many parts of the world. So something is inconsistent, something is wrong. Those are the major sources also of inequality. So how, how we can change this so that this really can become a region that we value what it can provide? And, and I think that's the, the challenge. So environmental services, for example, the market for environmental services still is not developed. And we need to be able to find a way to create those markets for environmental services. The level of, of exports that we have, that, that one company is exporting the diversity of potatoes we have, that's a failure for me, that's not a success. On the contrary, there should be enormous amount of companies exporting the potatoes we do. And we produce because of the huge diversity we have. That's the only way these farmers, which are in, in the mountains and are working with a huge diversity of, of products, are going to be able to do it. If you look today at the, at, at, at the sources of exports of potatoes, uh, most of them are prepared or preserved. That's the biggest chunk of, of exports of potatoes. Uh, and then the next one is, is potatoes, which are other than seed potatoes. But, but that's where the biggest growth is, and is not on, on native potatoes and the huge biodiversity that we have. So again, uh, and this was something that we discussed before uh, with, with, with the government, is we have an enormous variety, serious level of varieties of potatoes in the Andes. Uh, let's focus on some of them at least, and let's try to make them move, and let's try to create a market for them so that we can bring income to our people that are working in, in those areas. I, I think that's the only way we're going to, to change what we are observing today. And we need to start to value all these marvelous things that all of you have been saying. Uh, we need to start to put in uh, benefits to those environmental services, to all the biodiversity. In, in the way we are looking at, at, at food today, uh, the objective function for us, at least for, for FAO, is achieving SDG2, which means eliminating hunger in the world. And, and the only way we're going to eliminate hunger in the world is, is bringing healthy diets. And potatoes plays a crucial role, of course, Potatoes alone won't give you the healthy diets, but they bring you several elements that could be useful, extremely useful in this part of the provision of healthy diets. And healthy diets are too expensive right now. They are five times more expensive than an energy-based bias diet. And we have three billion people that cannot afford an access to those diets. So, so we need to start changing that substantially. And, and, and the Andes can play a crucial role. We need to build infrastructure to the Andes. That's central. That's the difference between Ecuador and Peru. In Ecuador, you have a freeway that goes through, through the Andes. In Peru, you don't. It's very complicated to move. Okay, so how we are going to provide access to markets and access to all these benefits uh, if we don't have uh, that capacity of, of connectivity? So if I want to see the future, for me, the future is bringing markets closer, uh, giving value to what we have there, and creating the markets for those things that we have. And, and of course, increase enormously the, the capacity to, 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 to sell and to trade these, these varieties. Many of our varieties are now being produced in other big countries where SIP has offices too. Uh, and they are, they are doing a lot of things that we are not doing uh, where, where the potato came from. So, 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 so again, uh, I think we need to think differently uh, to try to really realize the benefits because the ideal world will be a world where this region or these areas where these departments are, these regions of Peru are, where we have all these marvelous things are not the ones that are the, the ones with the highest poverty, are not the ones that are with the highest inequality. Uh, and that should be the case. Look at our history. They were not before. Why they are now? So what we are doing so wrong that we cannot do what was happening before? Thank so you. I'd like to give each of our panelists an opportunity to just um, say a couple things in, in closing remarks um, about just this conversation, this dialogue. What are you know any thoughts that you would just like to get out there um, since we have this unique opportunity um, for positioning the Andes? So let me start um, with you, Maximo. Okay, so not only a few words, I think that uh, today we're talking a lot about food systems, okay, uh, and the Andean region, uh, 
I think is, is a clear example of what a system is. Uh, and everything we do to achieve our goal, which is zero hunger, uh, we'll have trade-offs. And we need to understand how to minimize them. And what we can learn from the different uh, agroclimatic areas and, and, and different microclimates that we have in, in, in the Andes it's, it's enormous, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's a lot of things can be learned from there that could help enormously to increase resilience and, and could help enormously to find the strategies that will minimize those trade-offs to achieve our objective of elimination of hunger. So my only major point is, let's start focusing more on, on, on things that could create an impact. Uh, let's pick some of these amazing varieties and try to find markets to them. When I when I think on potatoes, I think a lot on bioeconomy. There are so many byproducts that can come out from, from potatoes that we are not using. In, in Peru now you have the vodka of potato, which is starting to, to become. That's a, a great tool to increase resilience because when you don't have the market, you have an alternative. No? So, so, so again, we need to think more in, in a systematic approach and trying to think of all the different benefits and the potential risks and trade-offs and trying to learn from that so that we can move forward.